Hello guys. So okay, in the previous video, we uh, I explained uh, the two approaches for or the two main approaches. There's not the only two approaches that are the two main approaches for solving indeterminate trusses when they are used as secondary elements. And the first approach was assume the diagonals cannot resist compression, which is not a very far-fetched approach because you know these members are slender, right? So the uh, the first, the first step, of course, is verify if this is statically determinate or indeterminate, and you can do that really easy. I remember we have an equation. What is the equation? Number of bars plus the number of reactions has to be smaller than two times the number of joints uh, in order to be uh, equal. I mean, not smaller in order to be statically determinate. I explained this intro in the introduction, so you can go to the introduction and watch it. Now, the second step is checking how this thing behaves. Now, if these are the loads, who is there? Uh -huh. So, if this uh, somebody commenting in a YouTube uh, video, if this is a type of a structure like it is, it's working now, and this thing is trying to deflect in this direction, if this is trying to deflect in this direction because of the external forces, now this is gonna try to hold it. And at the same time, when this comes down or try to come down, it's going to be pushing here. So this bar is in compression, and this bar here, uh, this bar is in compression, and this bar is going to be in tension because it's trying to resist that from happening. Same thing here. This bar is in tension. This bar is in compression. So the first approach is assume that whatever bar is in compression, you cannot, uh, it cannot take any force. So that means that is going to be a zero force member, in other words. Once again, you know, if you go to the books and they, they say, okay, let's make a cut here, and you have that cut over there, and they put the reactions and the reactions, and by the way, this is zero, right? Why zero? Because summation of forces is zero, so this reaction AX is zero, and AY and CY, which is here, we can calculate that. And then you have this force of six. I'm like just making this cut here, and then I have this bar, and that bar. I know it's not gonna go in that direction. I know it's gonna go in this direction because of what I just explained to you. The top part is gonna be subject to compression. A really easy kind of uh, intuitive way of studying trusses and seeing how they behave is imagine this is the truss and the, this is a beam. If this is a beam and, and the beam is going to deflect in this way, it's going to follow this shape. Same as the beam. So meaning the top cord should be subject to compression and the bottom cord should be subject to tension. So this part is going to be subject to compression, so entering into the joint. This one, because of I explained it to you, when this comes down, this is going to be in tension. It's going to be in tension. It doesn't matter if you don't know it, you can put any direction. But at the end, you're gonna have to work double when you realize that the, the, the directions are incorrect and the numbers are negative. This is gonna be in compression here, and this part, because of this, is gonna be in tension. Now, what is the idea behind that? The whole, the whole book says, okay, or the books, or when they explain this in, in their terms, they say, F E and F B, yada yada, and A E and A B, and then they say, oh, the whole vertical, the whole shear of this panel, they consider this a panel, is gonna be absorbed by only the diagonal intention, which is F B, the vertical component of the diagonal intention. Uh, once again, the, the triangle is 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and we could calculate the reaction, or we should calculate the reaction. Summation of forces, summation of moments in A equals 0. You do that. So 4 times 4, negative 4 times 4, minus 8 times 8, 4 times 4, 8 times 8 plus 8CY equals 0, and from here CY is going to be equal to 16 plus 64, uh, yep, oh yeah, with the calculator off, I was working with the calculator off, 
Now let me put it on. Remember to put the calculator in on position. That's the first thing that you have to do. 16 plus 64, okay, divided by 8, okay, perfect, 10. I don't know what I'm using the calculator for that thing. That shows how tired I am. So 10 kilonewton. And if it's the summation of forces in y equals 0, then you have what? You have 4 plus 8, 12 plus 6, 18, 18 down, 10 up. That means that D has to be 8 kilonewton. AY equal 8 kilonewton. Okay, now you put the 8 kilonewton here, and then the whole shear, and that's the, the way they call it. This is the whole shear here. The total shear acting in this panel is going to be down, and the total shear is going to be, because this is in compression, then this force is going to be zero. And then, and then if that force is going to be zero, then you have the, the shear here is going to be what? This is going to be six, this is going to be eight, so the total shear that is needed here, uh, this has to be equal to this, and this value isn't going to be equal to 2 kilonewton because, yeah, I know it goes in the other direction, but I'm saying that this has to be the vertical component of this. So if I have to know how much Fb is, Fb should be equal to, uh, or you can say 3 fifth of Fb has to be equal to 2, and then Fb is going to be equal to 3.33 in tension. Now, I think that this is easy, but sometimes, somehow it's not the way I talk. You know, I have to talk with the Southern accent, South American accent, and it's not that one. This is too academician for, for my terms, too academic for my terms, or for my taste. So basically I said, if I know this is in compression, here, and I know this is in tension, and I know this is not going to work. Well, guess what? AE is a zero force member. Same thing. If I know, so this bar doesn't exist. Now, if I know the same thing from this one, this is tension, right? Tension, tension. And this is going to be in compression. This is going to be in compression. So this one, which is CE, it's also zero, it's a zero force member because it's in compression. Now, if you start looking at this from eliminating those zero force members and you look at the joint C, when you look at the joint C, you have 10 and you have this one, which is CD, and you have this one, which is BC. And guess what? BC is also a zero force member. Three members, two collinears, one is not, the one that is not is zero. So BC is also a zero force member. Now this is also a zero force member here. Now, I already know this value here, and we already know this diagonal here also, the value for this diagonal, which is, a, well, we know it because we calculated. Now let's assume that we didn't calculate anything. Let's assume that we didn't calculate anything. Now you already have your reactions. Now look what happened with your reactions. Let, let's this bar, this bar here, is going to be a, look at this bar, same approach, same reason, AB is a zero force member also. Why is a zero force member? Because it's going to be the same thing that you have here, AX is zero, so you have two, one is not, zero. Now this other one here, AF, AF, this one here, if you look at this joint, AF is going to be what? It's going to be equal to AY. So AF is going to be 10 in compression. AF, 10 in compression. Same as, I'm um, sorry, 8. 8, because this is 8, right? If you, if you have doubt, just put the joint. Well, the joint is here, right? This is 0. This is 0. It has to be 8 in compression, like that. Now, AB, 0 if you look at this joint. And now you move at this joint. If you move to that joint over there, you have this bar, 
which is 8 in what? In compression. 8. This is the joint F. This bar is 8 in compression. Now, what else do we have? I have this 6 coming from here. And what else do we have? We have this force. And we have this force. What is this? What is this? This is EF. And this is a FB. And the triangle, once again, is 3, 4, 5. Now what do you do here in reality? Well, you're doing summation of forces in y equals zero. And if you do summation of forces in y equals zero, then you have eight minus six, eight minus six minus three-fifths of Fb equals zero, meaning Fb equals 3.3 .3 in tension. But this approach, this approach here, to me makes more sense than start talking about panels and things and shear and I don't know, it's the same. Just two different ways of saying it. Now once you have that, you can go and calculate the F. How do you calculate the F? Well EF is gonna be just F B multiplied or divided by a uh, four fifth, this one, by doing summation of forces in X. And now you have this one, you have this one. This one is going to be easy to calculate. Now you come here. If the structure is symmetric, this is not symmetric, but if the structure was symmetric, you can apply sy symmetry rules also to this one. But let's say that you move to the joint E. Well, if you, you, you move to the joint E, that's it. Because you have this that is 0, you have this that is 0. So that means that this bar here is going to be 4 in compression. You can see it from here, right? So this bar is 4 in compression, and this bar is 4 in compression here. Now you have this one in tension and this one in tension. The vertical component of this plus the vertical component of this minus four equals zero. You can solve everything so simple without going into that terminology of shear panels, which I hate. I don't know about you, but I hate it. So finish this, calculate the rest of the, the, the joints if you want to. But the important thing here is uh, remembering that part. That the compression, the compressive bars are zero, because they are going to buckle anyway. If they buckle, they are going to be unstable. Now, my advice to you is this: do this problem like you have no idea which one is in compression, and and put them, invert them, and try to calculate them and see what numbers do you come with, because the numbers that you come with are not going to make any sense and you're going to realize that you did something wrong and you have to review it again. Now, the only way that you can start being clear with how this moves is if you practice. Where is my yellow boss here? Look, once again, if this is the truss and the loads are like here, the compression is going to be in the top, the tension is going to be in the bottom. If the truss is with the forces down and the supports are on the top, or it's going to be behaving like that. If you have a cantilever truss here, cantilever truss fixed here, let's say, and then you apply the force here, cantilever truss, then you're going to have compression at the bottom, tension at the top, and the diagonal depends on what is pulling and what is resisting. I don't know. I don't find any other way to explain this. I think this is cool. I think this is easy. Now watch the next video for the second approach. Okay? Bye.